What's up, everybody? For the Winitachi here, you know what it is, and I just want to say thank you very much for tuning in to a brand new episode, a brand new Pokemon update for Pokemon Sun and Moon, which is just over a month away from being released and a couple days away from being beta or early testing release. And uh, we got some more information for you guys on Pokemon Sun and Moon, a uh, brand new Pokemon release, and a couple of cool additional features. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get into the trailer. Oh, new theme songs over here, son. Amazing Evolutions. Oh, okay, brand new. Brand new, son. We've got Silverly, and it looks like when it just removes its head, it's going to evolve. Or uh, that, that costume type thing. Don't know if to, Oh, wow. Uh, Silverly's ability is RKS system. Changes type while holding certain items. Oh, and it can turn... Oh, my gosh. Different looks and everything. Matches Silverly's current type based off of the new looks. It's green if it's uh, grass. Water, it's going to be blue. Fire, it's going to be red. Watch Jeng Mo's evolve form. Uh, Jeng Mo's... Oh, uh, Hakamo. Uh, this is a dragon fighting type with the bulletproof and soundproof ability, and we get Komomo, uh, dragon fighting type with the same exact abilities too. This is the brand new dragon type with, uh, Lola. Very cool looking, uh, final evolution there. It's all scaly too. It's, it looks like it's so, it looks ancient, scaly, uh, unique move, uh, cleaning scales. Uh, watch Bounce Sweet's evolved form. So Bounce Sweet's gonna get an evolution as well with Sini. It's a grass type, leaf guard, and oblivious, as well as Serena. So we don't get Serena anymore, as she is now going to Ho. And for those of you, oh, I just freaking spoiled it. For those of you guys that are watching the anime in Japanese, uh, you guys get to see Serena going into Ho while Ash goes to Alola. And this is the Serena that we get, one with a T and an extra E. How great is that? Trot kick. That's interesting. More of, dude, they went full all out on the evolutions. Rubombi, Bug and Fairy type, Honey Gather and Shield Dust. Rubombi. I love, oh, no, Grimer, oh, I hate this so much. I, I, I'm really not a fan, Poison Dark type for Grimer and Muck. I'm not a fan of the alone forms because, yes, it was cool when they were releasing just a few. Now it feels like 30% of the, um, Gen 1 Pokemon have gotten Alola forms. Now, that's cool and all, but now you need to finish the rest of them. You can't just do a little bit. Introducing new trainers. We've got Olivia, the Kahuna of Akala Island. Looking real fine. She's got nose passes. She's like a rock type person. It's like a Brock. She, she fits in well with Brock. Lima. Trial Captain specializing in the normal type. That's a male with female looking traits going on here. That's definitely a guy though. And yeah, Pokemon Sun and Moon. Just like I said, it's just over a month from being released. And we are about to dig in and dive on in. We're about to get into deep details on everything that we just saw from that trailer. So, starting off with the trial captains that we just finished off on. Each trial has a captain, whose role is to provide guidance to trial goers. All the captains are trainers who undertook trials in their own island challenge a few years earlier. An expert in normal type Pokemon, Captain Lima, graduated from the trainer school and is a hero to the students of that school. Next up, we got Lana as a captain who is an expert in water type Pokemon. She is dedicated to her family and is a reliable older sister who watches over her younger sisters. We got Captain Malo, who is an expert in grass type Pokemon. She loves cooking, but it seems that she sometimes her taste is a bit particular, and you can tell by the way she's dressing over here. She's got her own style, her own taste, just like most Pokemon characters nowadays. Specializing in Electric-type Pokemon, Captain Sophocles is good with mechanics and has invented various machines. And we got Kiawe is a captain whose expertise is Fire-type Pokemon. Together with his Marowak, he studies the traditional dances that have been passed down in the Alola region. Um, we, we didn't see all of these in the latest uh, trailer, 
Uh, some of these are actually already been announced uh, in the past couple trailers, so if interested in checking them out, go ahead and check out our previous uh, Pokemon Sun and Moon updates in the Pokemon Updates playlist on our channel. Kahuna's lead each island. Each of the Alolo's four islands has a leader called the Island Kahuna who governs the island. Kahunas are chosen by the Pokemon known as Guardian Deities, which are also found on each island. Olivia is a Kahuna of the Akala Island, the second island you visit on your uh, island challenge. Her skill is extraordinary, as can only be expected from someone chosen to serve as Kahuna at such a young age, yet she still insists that she is just a normal girl. Next up, we've got the Hala, is the Kahuna of Melamele Island, where you have just moved to, and is your rival Haru's grandfather. This is kind of the professor. His skill is renowned in the Alola region. He gives you your first partner Pokemon and expects great things from you. We saw a couple of brand new Pokemon. We've got Sovali, which is a synthetic Pokemon. Its type is normal. Its height is 7. Its weight is 221 in the ability of RKS system. When Type Null gains a partner it can trust, it deliberately destroys the restraining device it wears. It's pretty much what I stated inside the, uh, the trailer. Uh, once released from that heavy mass, so it is the mask, the Pokemon's speed increases substantially. Freed of the restraining effect of the mask, Silvali's senses are heightened, and if it reverts to its natural temperament, it has a wild nature, but it will obey a trainer that it trusts, and is protect the trainer from danger. It will put its own life on the line. Silvali is said to have been created to oppose a threat. By inserting exclusive items into the drive of Silvali's head, so it's, it's, a, it's a mechanical type Pokemon, like it says from the category, it's a synthetic type Pokemon. Its RKS system can be activated, causing Savali's somatic cells to be mutated and, and glow. The RKS system enables it to change its type, and its cells grow with different colors of light depending on its type. So depending on the, uh, the item that this Pokemon is holding, that will uh, base the type that it is. As you guys can see, by just looking at it, it has various typings with it. Uh, it's got like an Umbreonish type body. It's got like a gyarados tail. It's got talons uh, that could dr uh, derive from a grass type Pokemon. It's got it's so much flair to it that it can be anything. And again, it is a synthetic Pokemon. So Volley's ability is called Arceus System Ability, which no other previous Pokemon has had, and I believe this is the only Pokemon that will ever get it. By having Silvali hold items that correspond to each Pokemon type, it can change its own type. Multi-Attack is a move that only Silvali can learn, and this move's type changes based on which. So this is a type of a move that only Silvali is going to get, and it's probably something you'll never get rid of from this Pokemon. Next up, we got Hakamo, Category Scaly Pokemon. So they are scales. Uh, type is Dragon and Fighting, which is very interesting. Height of 3, weight of 103, and the ability of Bulletproof and Soundproof. When a Jung Mo evolves into Hakamo, it breaks from its fellows and begins to live on its own and train itself. Wherever it can find Pokemon to battle against, it seems to appear. Hakamo dances before battle to show its strength. So kind of like um, the, the fighting type in the latest, the Kalos. What's his face? You guys know who I'm talking about. Uh, clanging its scales together to make them ring out. When the dance reaches its climax, Takamo bellows a fierce was cry to challenge its opponent. Its scales make for finer armor, so Hakamo doesn't have to worry about its self defenses as it makes multi multitudes of strikes and overwhelms its opponent. But as a result, its scales are often become damaged and get torn up. They grow back immediately, so this does not cause Hakamo undue concern. In fact, it views the number of lost scales as proof of how ferociously it has fought, and it brandishes its bared arms to a boast of victory. Very interesting, and we get a very cool final evolution with Como. Uh, it's a scaly Pokemon dragon fighting, height of 5, uh, weight of 172, and abilities of bulletproof and soundproof. At the end of the harsh training, Hakamo evolves into overwhelmingly powerful form. It returns to the land of its birth, where it watches over the Jungmo from a distance. There is a legend that says Komomo is covered in glittering scales in order to drive away a great darkness covering the world. The reason these Pokemon seek out battle is to gain the power needed to defeat the darkness. When it detects someone approaching, the Pokemon rings the scales on its tail to announce its presence. It has no desire to battle against weak Pokemon. So this guy knows he's a boss. 
Kumo's greatest move is uppercut. It swings its arm up from below in a punch of great skill and force, sending its foe flying into the sky. By raising its arms aloft, it can generate a force powerful enough to change the fact, uh, change the face of a surrounding landscape. Playing scales is a move that only Kumo can learn. It scrapes the scales covering its body against one another, or against yeah, against one another, attacking with a great clamor. After using the move, Kumo's defense is lowered, so it's going to deal probably a great amount of damage, but its defense in the aftermath is going to be lowered. So it's a very interesting and cool looking Pokemon. Again, it is a dragon type with the unique of fighting with the go along with that. We've got Rabombi, B fly Pokemon. It's type of Bug and Fairy, which is always very fun. Uh, height is just under 1. Uh, the weight is 1.1 and the ability of Honey Gatherer and Shield Dust. Rabombi collect flower nectar and pollen to make into balls known as pollen pops. These serve as food and what's more they can also cause effects like paralysis and dizziness. Rabombi may use puffs to strike their opponents during battle. Some of the pollen puffs from Rabombi make can also relax in effects and relieve tiredness. These are distributed around the Alola region as high priced supplements. Rabombi hate getting rained on. They're covered with fluffy hairs that hold the pollen they've gathered, and the rain makes them wet and dirty. Alolan people know that if Rabombi are busily visiting the fields of flowers, you can be sure that the fair weather will continue. Very interesting. And we got Sini. Uh, it's a fruit Pokemon. It's a grass type. Its height is just above 2, and its weight is 18, and the abilities of Leaf Guard and Oblivious. I love the grass-type Pokemons. I don't know why, but there's al you always get that grass-type in the beginning of your adventure, and they just always look cool. The Calyx of Sini's head is harder than Bound Sweet's, so Sini is no longer worries about being stabbed by other Pokemon. As Bound Sweet, this Pokemon may have preferred to run away from others, but now Sini and the other Pokemon can play together. Upon evolving, the Pokemon's fragrance becomes even more delectable, but it also gains a tomboy-like personality. Living together with one is quite the ordeal. As it moves around, it spins its calyx, striking nearby objects. But Sini couldn't care less. Sini unleashes combo moves using the calyx on its head and its hard legs. First, it smacks opponents with the calyx on its head, and when the opponent flinches, it lands a whacking great kick. That usually does the trick. And the final evolution of this phase is Serena, which is a fruit Pokemon, grass type, height of 3, uh, weight of 47, and the abilities of Leaf Guard, and Queenly Majesty. And that looks like it's going to be an ability for just this one. And it looks like a very interesting Pokemon, so let's get to it. Serena has the nature of high class nobility, as you guys can tell by looking at it. Any Pokemon or human that approaches it with evil in mind will be punished forthwith. It even turns its fearsome glare upon its own trainer if the two of them are not fully in sync or if its trainer orders it to use a move that will be ineffective, only the strongest of Sini are able to evolve. When this happens, the Sini evolves into a blessing of other Sini. It then uses its strength to protect the bound sweet. Serena is a high kicking virtuoso. It has honed these skills beyond the level it achieved as Sini, and it attacks with graceful movements. At the same time, its fragrance mesmerizes its opponents, dealing them a secondary attack. Trop Kick is a move that only Serena can learn. It lowers the opponent's attack by uh, showering it with blazing hot kicks in a style similar to that originating from the tropical countries. It's said that this Pokemon loses its strength it touched on the crown, like protuberance on its head. Some Serena have Queenly Majesty ability, which no other Pokemon has previously had. The effect of Queenly Majesty is so intimidating that it proves opponents from using priority. I just want to say, first of all, about this Pokemon that I found that was very, very cool, is that it is a grass type. It does have its own ability, but I believe the type should have been grass and fighting, as it does, it, it seems like a very sturdy grass type, unlike most of them. So I thought it would have been more befitting to have that very unique grass fighting type. But I'm pretty sure they didn't, because there is a lot of fighting types in the Alola region. Next up, we got Alolan Grimer. Sludge Pokemon, Poison, and Dark. Height of 2, weight of 92, and the abilities of Poison Touch and Gluttony. When the population of Alolan Grimer increased, 
Dealing with their garbage became a serious problem as the Salusian grammar were imported from other regions. They fed primarily on garbage, so their body composition changed, as did their form. What did the teeth of the Pokemon mouth are in fact residual toxins from the garbage it eats. Oh well, we can you you can tell son. What appear to be teeth in this po okay. Which have hardened and crystallized. No method have been discovered to break down these crystals. Direct contact with presence danger. Alolan grammar is always eating garbage, but its constant hunger will cause it to begin eating other manufactured objects if it runs out of garbage to feed on. There are more than a hundred Alolan grammars in Alolan garbage processing plants, and all of the garbage produced in the Alolan region is taken up use as their food. Next up, Alolan muck, which looks very unique. Sludge Pokemon, Poison Dark, Height of 3, Weight of 114, the abilities of Poison Touch and Gluttony. Alolan muck eats whatever it is in reach without pausing, and if it feels the sharp pangs of hunger, it runs amok. Get it? A muck. Alolan muck. It's thought that this... Okay, I'm sorry about the stupid jokes, guys. It's ferocious appetite stems from an inability, inability to maintain its energy levels without a constant influx of toxins. Toxins have accumulated in Alolan Muck's body form, its steady diet of various waste products and manufactured materials. This accumulation has brought about a chemical change producing a new kind of toxin. Alolan Muck has the same poisonous crystals as Alolan Grimer but they're not limited to the mouth. They extend from all over the surface of its body. Alolan Muck uses them to attack. Just like other Pokemon use their fangs or claws, these are highly toxic crystals that are easily uh, knocked loose, making them extraordinarily dangerous. The Grammar and Muck in the Alola region produce and store their toxins within their bodies. So unlike the Grammar and Muck in the other regions, you won't detect any unpleasant aromas when you draw near one. So. I just want to say that was a huge update of evolution chains for Pokemon Sun and Moon, and I really couldn't... I mean, of course, the Dragon type was probably the coolest, but they were all very interesting in their own nature. Um, but I just want to say, for those of you tuning in, thank you very much for tuning in. Post a comment down below if you've got any questions about Pokemon Sun and Moon. I will be sure to answer as soon as possible. Again, we do give you guys updates on everything that I can find possible in the Pokemon franchise. So stay tuned for some more content brought to you by Further Itachi. Peace out, everybody.